Hello everyone. Today we are going to analyze this beam using Clapeyron's theorem of three movements. In this beam, the support B sinks by 10 mm. The flexural rigidity EA is given as 8000 kN meter square. Before analyzing this beam, let us see the beam one time. In this beam, there are two spans, span AB and span BC. In the span AB, there is a uniformly distributed load 3 kN per meter and it is acting for the full span. In the span BC, we have a eccentric point load 12.5 kN acting at 4 meter from the point B. The moment of inertia for the span AB is I. For the span BC, it is 2.5 I. Length of the span AB is 8 meter. Length of the span BC is 10 meter. In the point A, there is a fixed support. In the points B and C, there are roller supports. In this beam, the number of movements to be found is 2, MA and MB. To find these two movements, we need two equations. Using two spans, we can make one equation. In this beam, we have only two spans, AB and BC. Using these two spans, we can form only one equation. But we need two equations to make the second equation. Let us make an imaginary span on the left of fixed and A. You can see that on the left of A, I have made an imaginary span A0A A, having the span of L0. Using the spans A0A A, and AB, we can make one equation. And using the spans AB and BC, we can make one more equation. So totally now we can make two equations. Now let us take the spans A naught A and AB and form the first equation. Now let us find the ordinates. To find the ordinates, we have to consider every span as a separate simply supported beam and make the bending moment diagrams. For the imaginary span A naught A, we cannot make the diagram because it is an imaginary span. In the span AB, there is UDL 3 kN per meter. This UDL is acting for the full span. In the simply supported beams, if the UDL is acting for the full span, the formula to find the maximum bending moment is WL square upon 8. Here W is 3, L is 8. After calculations, we are getting 24. Now let us apply the theorem of three movements in spans A naught A and A B. In the previous problems, we have used this equation. In this problem, the support B is sinking. So we have to additionally include these two terms. Now let us find area 1 and x bar right. This is a second degree parabola. The formula for the area of second degree parabola is 2 upon 3 into breadth into height. For this parabola, the breadth is 8, the height is 24. When we apply the values here, we are getting 128. Now let us find x bar right. This is a symmetrical diagram. So the centroid lies in the center. To find x bar right, 
we have to divide the length by 2. When we do that, we are getting 4 meter. Now, we are going to find HA0 and HB. The support B sinks by 10 mm. Let us convert 10 mm into meter. When we divide 10 by 1000, we will get 0 0.01 meter. To find HA0 and HB, we have to keep the reference in the mid support A. Since A0 is an imaginary support, HA0 will be 0. The support B is lower than mid support A by 0 0.01 meter. Since it is lower than the mid support A, we have to apply a negative sign. In this equation, this term, this term, this term and this term will be 0 because these are for the imaginary span A0A. Then let us apply the values. L0 is 8. Area 1 is 128. X bar right is 4 meter. HB is minus 0 0.01 meter. Let us apply them. In this equation, let us multiply by i on both of the sides. When we multiply by i, here, here and here, i will be eliminated. In this term, we will have i. In the question, value of ei is given 8000 kN square. Instead of EI, we can apply 8000. Finally, we are making the first equation. Now, let us take the spans AB and BC and make the second equation. We have already made the ordinate for the span AB. Now, let us make the ordinate for BC. In the span BC, there is an eccentric point load. The formula to find the maximum bending moment under the load is WAB upon L. Here W is 12.5, A is 4, B is 6, L is 10. Finally, we are getting 30. Using this value, we can make this diagram. Now, let us apply the theorem of three moments in the spans AB and BC. In this equation, let us find area 1 and x bar left. We have already calculated area 1 in the previous step. Now, let us find x bar left. Since it is a symmetrical diagram, we can easily find x bar left by dividing 8 by 2. When we do that, we are getting 4 meter. Now, let us find area 2. This is a triangle. The area formula for the triangle is half into breadth into height. Here, the breadth is 10, the height is 30. When we apply the values, we are getting 150. Now, let us find x bar right. For this type of triangle, the centroid distance towards the right is L plus B upon 3. Here L is 10, B is 6. When we apply the values inside the formula, we are getting 16 by 3 meter. Now let us see how to find HA and HC. Now, the support B is the mid support. So, we have to keep the reference in the mid support B. First, let us see the support A from the support B. The support A is higher than the support B by 0 0.01 meter. So, HA is 0 0.01 meter. Since the support A is higher than the support B, this value should be positive. 
the support C also is higher than the support B by 0 0.01 meter. So HC also is 0 0.01 meter. The support C is also higher than the support B. So this value should be positive. In this equation, let us apply the values. L1 is 8, L2 is 10, I1 is I, I2 is 2.5 I. Also, we have calculated area 1, x bar left, area 2, x bar right, HA and HC. Let us apply all of the values. In the point C, there will be no movement because it is a simply supported end. So MC will be 0. After the simplification, we are getting this. Then we can multiply by I on both of the sides. Here, here, here and here. I will be eliminated. In these two terms, we will have additionally I. In this equation, let us apply the value of EI. After the calculations, we are making the second equation. We have made two equations. Now let us use the calculator and solve these two equations. If you do not know how to solve two equations in the calculator, see the description below. There is a link. You can click the link and watch the video. I have used the calculator and got the final movements. For MA, I am getting minus 21.6 kN meter and for MB, I am getting minus 12.3 kN meter. Now, we are going to find the vertical reactions. First, let us take the span AB and find the vertical reactions. In the span AB, MA will be acting in the anticlockwise direction and MB will be acting in the clockwise direction. In this span, first I am going to find RA. For that, I am going to take moment about B. In this case, I am moving towards right hand side. Clockwise will be positive and anticlockwise will be negative. The vertical reaction RA is acting in the clockwise direction. So it will be positive and the distance is 8. So 8 RA. The UDL is acting in the anticlockwise direction. So it will be negative. When the UDL comes, we have to multiply with the distance and a distance by 2. Then we have two moments. 21.6 moment is acting in the anticlockwise direction. So it will be negative. The 12.3 moment is acting in the clockwise direction. So it will be positive. Finally, we are getting RA which is equal to 13.16 kN. Now let us apply the rule sigma v is 0 and find out RB1. Now let us take the span BC and find the reactions. In the span BC, we have only one moment, MB, which is acting in the anticlockwise direction. In this span, first I am going to find RB2. For that, I am going to take moment about C. RB2 is acting in the clockwise direction. So it will be positive and the distance is 10 meter. So 10 RB2. The point load is acting in the anticlockwise direction. So it will be negative and the distance is 6. So minus 12.5 into 6. Then we have a moment which is acting in the anticlockwise direction. So it will be negative. After calculations, we are getting RB2 which is equal to 8.73 kN. Then we can apply the rule sigma v is 0 and find out rc. We have found the reaction in the point b two times. 
let us add rb1 and rb2 so that we will get rb now let us make the shear force diagram using the reactions and the loads we can make this diagram now we are going to draw the bending moment diagram before drawing the bending moment diagram let us make the free moment diagram and the end moment diagram for making the free moment diagram we have to consider every span as a separate simply supported beam and then we have to use these formulas and find the moments using those values we can make these two diagrams then using the end moments we can make the end moment diagram now let us combine the free moment diagram and the end moment diagram so that we will get the bending moment diagram now we are going to end this session thank you for watching this video